What is up? I am meeting with you today by way of video to continue this series, uh, this video series dealing with anxiety. This is part three, and we've been looking at uh, the book of Philippians. We've also been going through Max Lucado's book called Anxious for Nothing. And in the book, he talks about how we shouldn't be anxious for anything and that the Bible tells us that the Apostle Paul wrote in Philippians that we should uh, be anxious for nothing or don't worry about anything. And um, in the first lesson, we, we, we got an acrostic from Max Lucado, the word calm, C-A-L-M. And each word or each letter stands for something specifically, like the C stands for celebrate God's goodness. The A stands for ask for God's help. The L uh, stands for leave your concerns with Him. And the M stands for meditate on good things. And so last week we talked about celebrating God's goodness. Today I want to talk to you just real quick about asking God for help that we, we call that praying. And so we're going to talk about that over the next couple of weeks. But, uh, but today I want us to look real quick at Philippians chapter 4, verse 5. And this is what it says, Let your gentleness be evident to all, the Lord is near. Now that Greek word for gentleness uh, describes a temperament that's seasoned and mature, one that's level-headed. This is the kind of person that's not going to panic, not going to overreact. This is the, the cool under pressure kind of person. And it says, let your gentleness be evident to all. In other words, when you're gentle, when you're calm, when you're cool under pressure and you're not panicking, people are going to notice that. If you can think of like the if the the team is has just seconds to to travel down the field and and win the the game and the fans are are going crazy and the fans are nervous and the coaches are nervous and the players are nervous but you have that quarterback who's cool under pressure and it's just it seems to be unflustered by everything going on that's what we're talking about the person who isn't going to overreact they're going to stay calm they're going to stay cool even in the craziest of situations that's who we want to become we want to move past anxiety to become a person who max locato calls contagiously calm the person who's not only calm under pressure but other people see it as well now I think that the person be it, becoming the person who stays calm in all situations can can be doable even if you deal with anxiety. So I want to take this verse, let your gentleness be evident to all, the Lord is near from Philippians 4 or 5, and just show you real quick how I can become that contagiously calm person. Because I think the answer is found in the second or, or the last part of that verse where it says, the Lord is near. You see, for me, that gives me a lot of comfort to know that God is right there with me every step of the way, that there's not anything I'm going to go through that He's going to bail on me. He's always going to be right there. And if I look through the Bible, I can find plenty of, uh, of situations where people were told to stay calm or to not be afraid because God is there. And that is a great promise for us to hold on to. Psalm 46.1 says, God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in time of trouble. Now that phrase, ever-present help, is just a fancy way of saying God is always there. Even when things are bad, when things are chaotic, when, when, when things are going crazy around us, He's right there every step of the way. And we can trust in Him no matter where we go. I read a story from uh, a guy named Bill Fry who wrote a book called The Dance of Hope. And he talks about a time where when he was a kid, it was one of his chores was to go out and cut firewood. He would get trees that had fallen down and, and he'd chop them up and, and bring them inside for the fireplace or for their fire. Uh, their, they had a, a, also a stove that uh, was wood burning. And so he would collect wood for the fireplace and for the stove and a lot of times he would get these big old stumps and he would pull them up and he would chop them up. 
And he came across this one one day that he had trouble with. And here's, here's what he wrote. One day I found a large stump in an open field near the house and tried to unearth it. I literally pushed and pulled and crowbarred for hours, but the root system was so deep and large I couldn't pull it out of the ground. I was struggling when my father came home from his office, spotted me working, and came over to watch. He said, I see your problem. I asked, what is that? The father said, you're not using all your strength. I exploded and, and told him how hard I had worked and for how long, and he insisted, you're not using all your strength. When I cooled down, I asked him what he meant, and he said, you haven't asked me for help. And I think that we do this sometimes with our Heavenly Father. We try to solve our own problems. We try to deal with our own anxiety by ourselves when God's saying, look, just ask me. I'm right here. Just ask me for help. Ask me for the power uh, to, uh, to, to, to get through this situation. Ask me for the strength. And so that would be my encouragement to you today is to stop trying to do this by yourself and instead pray. And ask God to help you with your anxiety. Ask Him to help give you the strength and the courage to get through today and to be stronger tomorrow and to, to become the person that He has created you to be. Zephaniah 3.17 says, For the Lord your God is living among you. That's great news, right? It also says He is a mighty Savior. He will delight in you with gladness. And listen to this. With His love... He will calm all your fears. What a great message from God's Word. Have a great week. If you need me, you know where to find me. I'm always here for you.